President Emerson Omingagwa's verbose spokesman, George Karamba, conveyed an emphatic message to the citizens of Zimbabwe, explicitly declaring that any possibility of negotiations with opposition leader Nelson Chamisa is outright rejected. Karamba's declaration conclusively shudders calls for an inclusive government of national unity, similar to the coalition established in 2009 following a period of tempestuous political upheaval. The spokesperson's remarks arose in response to an impassioned appeal by economist Gift Mugano, who encouraged Zimbabweans from all walks of life to unite and engage in respectful dialogue to collectively address the nation's urgent challenges. Professor Mugano cited instructive examples of fruitful dialogue promoting social cohesion in Zimbabwe's complex history and contended that, when we unite through open-minded discussion, we can surmount even the most imposing of obstacles. He appealed to leaders representing diverse sectors, industry, religious communities, civil society, political parties and academia, to spearhead fostering an all-embracing dialogue. However, George Karamba dismissed Mugano's plea with vehemence and accused him and prominent human rights advocate Thabani Mpofu, who doubles as Chamisa's personal lawyer, of misguiding the young man and ultimately steering him towards the fringes of the political arena. Professor, here is my honest view from inside, Nguva Yataida Norirano Yakafura. That's the truth. Those keen on talks took up the chance and are communicating with the state. Those who chose to stay out of dialogue because of cheap advice from United Advocate Fulcrum will remain outside the circuit of dialogue. What you are harvesting are the disutilities of your amateurish political exuberance in the run-up to elections. You fortified Chamisa on the wrong. Today he is the wilderness you created, and you want to sound constructive, reasonable, and level-headed. You are part of the cabal of pseudo-intellectuals who misled the young man. Today you seek to salve your conscience by abortively appearing to renegotiate for his second coming. IT can't, Karamba stated. Karamba's statement effectively dismisses any possibility of a GNU being formed. A revelation which further deepens the political divide in Zimbabwe. Chamisa himself has acknowledged the challenges of leading an opposition party in a country where the ruling party holds a tight grip on power. The hazards of a dictatorship. It's not easy to lead and run a political party in a dictatorship especially without a budget and in an environment of extreme poverty. It's even worse when this is all in a context of massive unemployment where some occupy public office opportunistically mistaking citizens' representation and deployment for employment. It's a difficult environment. What an impossible task. But then to serve is to sacrifice. Change must happen. The job will get done. Chamisa tweeted last week, adding a twist to the already turbulent political scene. A prominent Bulawayo-based preacher, Pastor Ian Dovu, delivered a prophecy in 2019 that paints a dramatic picture of Zimbabwe's future. According to his vision at the time, Chamisa, who he referred to as Eagle, would be phased out and be replaced by the Lion if he missed his time of visitation. The prophecy went on to say that the door would then be left open for the Lion to carry the nation forward and that is how the Eagle would be dropped. Pastor Ian Lovu, a PhD holder in economics, said Umingagwa Leviathan had given Chamisa the Eagle another chance for them to work together. But if the Eagle would not seize the opportunity, the pastor said he did not see another door being opened for the eagle again. This five-year-old prophecy appears to have already come to pass as President Umningagwa is visibly no longer interested in forming a government with Nelson Chamisa. Umningagwa came to power in 2017 following a bloodless coup that ousted longtime leader Robert Mugabe. At the time, he was seen as a beacon of change and hope for the struggling country. However, high inflation, corruption, unemployment, and censorship remain rife in Zimbabwe. Recently, Newsday revealed that engagement is underway between the SADC and Chamisa to resolve the August 2023 electoral dispute. Chamisa lost the ballot for the second time to Mingagwa, who won 52.6% of the vote. Chamisa has refused to recognize Mingagwa as the legitimate leader of Zimbabwe, describing the election as a gigantic fraud. 
The SADC Election Observer Mission said the Zimbabwean elections failed to meet regional and international standards for holding free, fair and credible polls. Chamisa has been writing to the SADC since last year, seeking its intervention in the electoral dispute.